While we learned about the basic equations governing gravitation in AP Physics 1, how do we analyze orbits and celestial objects in AP Physics C? As a quick review from my Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation video, the force of gravity between two objects in space is given by this equation here, with a direction that is always attracted to the other mass. In addition, the gravitational potential energy between two objects in space is given by this equation. Remembering from our work and energy video that the force field that produces a potential energy function is the negative derivative of the potential energy, we can arrive back at our original force equation from before. Using this potential energy equation is just like any other form of energy. When analyzing objects in orbit, their total energy will be their kinetic energy plus their gravitational potential energy, and the sum of these two will always be this quantity here, where the letter A represents the length of the semi-major axis of the planet's elliptical orbit, but we'll touch a little bit on that later in this video. Another cool concept that is derived from this energy equation is what's known as the escape velocity, or the velocity needed for an object to fully exit the gravitational field of another object, say, the velocity needed to throw this ball for it to never fall back down to Earth. This would occur when our semi-major axis of orbit is essentially infinity, making the total energy zero. Rearranging, the escape velocity equation is shown here. Besides Newton, however, another equally important set of laws related to gravitation are known as Kepler's Three Laws of Planetary Motion. His first law states that every orbit consists of an object in an elliptical trajectory around a central body which always lies at one of the foci of this ellipse. For circular orbits, the central object will lie in the center, as the quote-unquote foci of a circle are both at the center. His second law is derived from the conservation of angular momentum, and states that planets or orbiting objects will sweep out equal areas of their elliptical paths during equal time intervals. While this law will almost never be used to actually solve problems, it's still important to understand that because the gravitational force is a central force, or a force that always points in the radial direction, it will provide no torque on planets or other orbiting objects, conserving the total angular momentum of the orbit as a whole. Kepler's third law, arguably the most useful for AP Physics C, describes the relationship between period of orbit and semi-major axis, which we can actually derive here quite simply for specifically a circular orbit. Assuming these masses and lengths, and realizing that the centripetal force causing the circular orbit of this planet is provided by the gravitational force, we can equate the two quantities. Furthermore, using our circular motion knowledge that the velocity is defined as a circumference divided by the period, or distance divided by time, we can solve for the period of orbit. In reality, this radius r here can be generalized to be the semi-major axis a for all elliptical orbits that aren't perfectly circular. With that, you can feel good about learning the concepts of gravitation and Kepler's three laws of planetary motion.